Okay, so we'll go on to the moment of truth. What this means is, uh, actually this is a report done by Google as well, uh, winning the zero moment of truth. So what this zero moment of truth means is people are actually, if you're going to go especially buy offline or online, they're going to be doing lots of researches. They're going to be checking for lots of uh, information on the website. As you can see, you can going to be searching, read reviews, uh, watch videos, ask your network, uh, see word of mouth on the website. What is very important is that you need to be there on that zero moment of truth. The first moment of truth usually is when they purchase the product. But, bef uh, but with this uh, situation, uh, current situation as well, with uh, all the internet, uh, with lots of contents on the internet now, you need to be communicating to the consumers even, be yes, even before they're interested in buying the product. And that has to be done at the right time, at the right place. So this is something which you need to think about. So understand zero moment of truth. And this can be understood by analytics. When Mr. Timing users change their mind to when users become purchasers, what is the last content they saw before they bought that product? Did they see actual what word of mouth did they see? Did they see any user reviews? Did they uh, go to social and uh, uh, make a tweet about it? You, need, you can understand that from analytics. So when, where did the users come from when they bought a product? And secondly, what content is contributing to success? If there are lots of uh, articles, uh, lots of examples, uh, B2B, like, I don't know, if they, uh, they yes, installed a certain product which went well, so maybe user interviews or company interviews, what content is contributing to success? This can also be understood by analytics. And finally, when are users loyal and disloyal? So what is the timing when users think, oh, this is a very good service. This is a very good company. When is the timing? Do they think that this company is not good? They're not meeting our demands or my feelings has become bad. You'll need to understand that as well. And that's where you've got to be. The zero moment of truth is it's the timing when users change their attitude or when users change their feelings. You need to understand, understand that and you need to be action, taking action on that timing. Then finally, we have personalization at scale. Negative elimination, positive enhancements done. You can take away action plans to do it, but obviously every person is different. So, well, one content might suit someone else, uh, someone but, but yourself, but that but probably won't suit someone else. What you need to do is uh, create a build a user profile. You need to collect the data about users, not only analytics, this might be uh, emails, you may be doing uh, questionnaires to the users. Uh, it might be about uh, the claim or a comment they did on the phone. It might be their social activity. There might be a wide range of things. But the more data, obviously uh, not personal data, but more data you have about the users, the more you're gonna be able to make decisions for that users. To do that, you need to create a dashboard to monitor the journey of customers. So it's not about uh, how many people are coming to the website, how many purchases were made. This was actually a report which was uh, shown in the Adobe Summit 2019, which is last year. So Adobe themselves have a customer dashboard to understand the journey. But their business model is the uh, discover, try, buy, user, uh, renew. So first step is obviously users need to discover that uh, there's Adobe's, Adobe's uh, creates these kind of products, creates these kinds of services. So it's about understanding how, how, how users discover our product, where they come from, and how they, how, uh, uh, what, what is their uh, sympathy towards Adobe at the starting place. Then, then there's the try phase. Uh, most services products have us like a free uh, time plan. Like you can see for like uh, one month free. Then they analyze that as well how many people start it. And actually Adobe products such as Photoshop, Illustrator, they actually are looking at data of what kinds of uh, menus the users are using that has been sent and being analyzed. So they're using this, like I don't know, a crop image or blur this, et cetera. That's obviously being analyzed as well. How long they're using it. So are the users satisfied using this product? They analyze that as well. Then they, they, they actually go to the buy phase 
how many people are struggling at the actual purchase uh, process, then they become users. Then obviously they analyze this as well. How long are they using the product? Uh, how often is it? Has that uh, recency decreased? Frequency increased? They look at all that data as well. Uh, they did surveys as well, and actually they uh, have NPS scores as well. Or how how, how are you satisfied? Then there's the renew phase. It's a uh, because Adobe is mainly now a subscription subscription service. So there's a certain cost to use that product in one year. How many people are going to renew it? What types of people actually renewed the product, and what people didn't? So it's understanding about customers uh, in a journey style with uh, the data. There was one good example, actually, uh, which was talked. Uh, it's about Best Buy, I think. You know the company. It's a very large retail store in America. And in 2013, the retail sales, which is uh, actually buying uh, the products from the physical store, was about 80%. But last year, it, that has changed around completely. And online sales are now 90% of the Best Buy's uh, sales. What eBay, uh, sorry, sorry, what Best Buy had done to change this, uh, there was three, th uh, three things. First was price match. Uh, so obviously there's gonna be other companies such as Amazon, uh, co uh, other competitors. So they decided to do the price match even on online website stores. They did that in the physical store. So maybe that, uh, another yes, retail store, if it's cheaper, they're gonna lower that down. But they, did, they changed that to online as well because users are gonna be looking at prices online, offline. So it's just, uh, to stop us uh, just, uh, go to the store, just see the product and buy online. They wanted to stop that. Obviously they did free shipping as well. And what was very interesting was this free consultation service they're doing. Uh, you can go actually see the website in Best Buy as well. But what this is they do is a virtual consultation. A product expert you can trust now available virtually. Uh, obviously they did a physical one as well, but due to the current situation, uh, they're doing it virtually as well. What this service does is uh, they, is try to solve users' problems uh, about uh, mainly uh, like uh, video recorders, DVD players, mm -hmm. televisions. What they do is uh, it doesn't it, it doesn't need to be the product they bought at eBay. So maybe they bought a TV, they wanted to see Netflix. It mm -hmm. doesn't show. Then you can consult the service, and uh, and eBay. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, Best Buy helps them. Yes, solve the problems, even if it's not the product they bought from the company. But this means they become loyal to uh, the Best Buy, and then maybe next time if they're going to buy a product, because it's not about buying products, as I explained at the beginning of the presentation. It's about the experience. They want to see Netflix. That's why they buy TVs. But if that's not going to be solved, they're not going to have a good experience. Maybe your company's sales might have gone up, but user satisfaction has gone down. So this is, I think, a very good uh, service they do to in, in, uh, sorry, the increase experience of users. And also they do a personalization as scale in very detail as well. So when they send emails, they have attributes of about 12,000 user identifying fields. So this might be male, female, what product they bought, where they're living. Uh, if, if, if they're going to use the virtual, consult, uh, con, uh, virtual uh, consultant services, they're gonna know what products they have, uh, the users have at their home, even if you didn't, didn't buy from the Best Buy. So you might buy about TV, then they might be having problems with video recorder. Maybe they didn't buy that from eBay, but by doing consultation, they're gonna be able to obtain that data as well. So they have a lot of ranges of identifying fields. And if you're gonna be multiplying that and be sending emails according to that user type, they actually send 40 million uh, types of emails. So that's probably about different for almost every users, actually. Probably Amazon did this, uh, the same thing as well. So this is what they, they mean by personalization as scale. To personalize as scale, you're gonna be needing the user information, user data, obviously in the private way, but as the more information you have, you're gonna be able to uh, create a better experience for each of the users. So finally, uh, before I go into the final thoughts, I just wanted to show uh, the examples of future tech and user experience optimization. So uh, as I just explained, uh, the Best Buy example actually was from the Adobe Summit 2019, which they did in Las Vegas, which uh, I attended as well. But unfortunately this year, uh, due to the corona situation, everything was done virtually online. 
And in Adobe Summit, there is a very popular section, a uh, seminar uh, called Adobe Sneaks. What this does is they show you uh, demos of something which might be coming in the future. Actually, about 50 to 60% of these demos actually become products. So this is the latest 2020 Adobe Summit Sneaks. Uh, there were six of them, and uh, three of them were directly linked to user experience. So I'll show you that video. I don't know if you can, uh, you can probably go see the URL later. Uh, I don't know if the sound's gonna go to that, uh, everyone else, but I'll just show you the v three videos, which is it's very interesting. So yes, what we're gonna be showing uh, from this demo is what we do is uh, you can create uh, journeys for each types of users. So maybe like a user comes to the website. Okay, so that's, so first thing you do is create a goal. So like uh, buying a purchase, uh, increasing loyalty to the website. Okay, this I probably, if I can uh, make it slightly bigger, if I can wait a few seconds. Oh, sorry, this, miss. And what this is, is uh, you create a journey. As, as you can see, you easily create uh, customer journeys. And it's, what you can do with this tool is you can see the actual figures of the, each of the steps. So they're obviously like, uh, you know, you do a workshop, create journeys, but you just stop there. What this does is actually, first you create a goal. And what you can see is, uh, so you, can wait a few, you can wait a few seconds. You can go actually see the analysis yes, of how many people actually go through the funnel, how, how many revenues you can expect in the next uh, week or next month. And you can actually go see the path uh, in real time by detail. So we're probably going through there, like a repeat stay in, uh, in entertainment retreat lovers. So these are this is actually a, a hotel site, and uh, like the, uh, the users go to stay at the hotel for different reasons. So you can use Adobe Sensor, which is the AI. You can see from the actual percentages uh, how many percentages went to the next step directly. So the repeat stay is yes, only, they're not engaging well. They, and when you click the data, you can see what time users are engaging, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. And it, these are advices when you should be sending contact, uh, short messages to the users. Uh, as, as you can see, depending on the time, the interaction rate changes. So this, this analysis is done uh, automatically as well. And maybe, yes, so if you, yes, if you change the time you want to send the email, you can, uh, they do a prediction of how many people's going to be interacting. Uh, as you can see, you can see the, uh, sorry, the relation between different customer uh, user types. So 82% of us, uh, repeat state customers not interacted or roulette lovers. So as you can see, so this, uh, they, what they were doing is to send you a coupon for uh, like a dinner, but 82% of the users in this uh, journey actually love roulettes. So they don't have time to go to the restaurant. So that obviously doesn't work. Then what happens is when, then if you change the sending the e email or the communication time method, then you can see how much uh, percentage increase you're gonna get in revenue or the number of percentage of people who are gonna actually convert the, uh, finish the uh, journey. So this is one way of uh, sort of interacting with data real time to increase uh, the customer experience. Okay. Second, we'll go on to Access Ace. This is actually a very simple product, but very useful. Uh, with the, uh, it's, it's at least something to do with SDGs as well. But obviously there are lots of people who have uh, difficulties in like seeing or reading the website with their, so their eye might be slightly bad. And obviously what is very important is to create a website for those kind of people. But it's very difficult to do that because you know most people don't have that problem. They don't know how to make that content. Maybe it might take time. They don't know if, how much that's gonna be contributing to the revenue. So what this service uh, does is, well, you can see the score on the right-hand side. This is an accessibility checker. So what they do is uh, the Adobe this is a product actually goes, checks through the website. They find what uh, images are good, what images are bad. You need to add this content for this uh, to make it a better website. So it's not just only about checking this, but you can uh, make the uh, changes from this product straight away uh, with about a few clicks, which is very interesting. So yes, uh, color contrast. So this is uh, what you can see that this is difficult for people who have difficulties is seeing that 
to understand what products this is. is. So what this does is, yes, you can check click uh, what this does. And then if you go on to, sorry, and it recommends uh, other products, which might be more useful to the, uh, which might be more seeable to the eye. It's for people who have difficulties. 